Macbeth is perhaps the darkest of Shakespeare's tragedies. And as night falls in his castle, we feel the terrors thicken. As Macbeth, urged on by the pleadings of his ambitious wife, comes from the banquet where he is entertaining King Duncan. If it were done when it is done, then twere well it were done quickly. If the assassination could trample up the consequence and catch with his surcease success, that but this blow might be the be all and the end all here, but here upon this bank and shoal of time, we jump the life to come. But in these cases, we still have judgment here that we but teach bloody instructions, which being taught return to plague the inventor. This even-handed justice commends the ingredients of our poisoned chalice to our own lips. He's here in double trust. First, as I am his kinsman and his subject, strong both against the deed. Then, as his host, who should against his murderer shut the door, not bear the knife myself. Besides, this Duncan hath borne his faculties so meek, hath been so clear in his great office, that his virtues will plead like angels trumpet-tongued against the deep damnation of his taking off, and pity like a naked newborn babe striding the blast, or heaven's cherubim horsed upon the sightless couriers of the air, shall blow the horrid deed in every eye. The tears shall drown the wind. I have no spur to prick the sides of my intent, but only vaulting ambition, which o'erleaps itself and falls on the other. Night has fallen. The king has been escorted to his apartments, and Macbeth comes into the courtyard, his servant before him carrying a torch. Go, bid thy mistress, when my drink is ready, she strike upon the bell. Get thee to bed. Is this a dagger that I see before me? A handle toward my hand? Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. Art thou not fatal vision, sensible to feeling as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind, a false creation proceeding from the heat-oppressed brain? I see thee yet, in form as palpable as this which now I draw. Thou marshalst me the way that I was going, and such an instrument I was to use. Mine eyes are made the fools of the other senses, or else worth all the rest. I see thee still, and on thy blade and dudgeon gouts of blood, which was not so before. There's no such thing. It is the bloody business which informs thus to mine eyes. Now, o'er the one half world, nature seems dead. And wicked dreams abuse the curtain's sleep. Witchcraft celebrates pale Hecate's offering. And withered murder, alarmed by his sentinel, the wolf whose howls his watch. Thus, with his stealthy pace, with Tarquin's ravishing stride, towards his design, moves like a ghost. How sure and firm set earth, hear not my steps which way they walk, for fear the very stones prate of my whereabouts, and take the present horror from the time which now suits with it. Whiles I threat, he lives. Words to the heat of deeds, too cold breath gives. I go, and it is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven.
And in the last act, Macbeth, now a savage tyrant, ravaged by his own cruelties, faces utter despair as his wife dies by her own hand and he awaits the inevitable vengeance of his enemies. Tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time and all our yesterdays have lighted fools their way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying Nothing. <laughs>